you're really turning a blind eye. Like we had photos. This is this is the QBCC's the QBCC inspector. inspector. But because it was flashed, the QBCC didn't want to know about it. Inside is almost falling off. The what screen. is that? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! There's, there's, there's not a. The water's not going in there. It's. How's the water not going in there? Where the termite barrier used to be, he's just poured concrete over it and then gone and bought his own from Bunnings and redone it. Oh. Done. So that all angles back and runs down inside there. Like there's no way for that water to get away. It's about. Somewhere between four and five, four, just over four. Pulled up and he was like, oh, do we, is there supposed to be a drip edge there? Nah, that's the way it's finished. Like, oh. I had to install that before putting yeah. this wall cladding on. Yeah. They've got no liability at that stage. As soon as the roofer installs it, yeah. the roof is now responsible for it more than the builder. So the installer knew that they were doing a terrible job before they even put the, and yeah. they just kept going anyway. The thing they did and they just kept going. We've got our coffee, we've been fueled up. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. And I love these twin wall glasses. I got some from Aldi recently. Oh, oh, actually, I don't even think oh, see, I can show you photos. <laughs> but he's just fixed a piece of wood onto the side of the slab and then mounted the doors on that. So that's the recess. For the doors? For, the, for doors the doors aren't actually installed inside their But he's just got a block of wood slab. bolted to the side of the slab that he's mounted the doors to. So before we go to rectify, we need to move the doors back in onto the slab so they're and then flash in around. Right, OK. So is that the case with all the windows? All the doors, yeah. All the doors. Yeah. All the windows, like we said before, you are just make... mounted on the frame but supported by the flashing. OK, so the in the process of r ripping off all the windows, uh, all the flashings to the windows, yeah. there's going to have to be some there. structure to the... There's going to so be... You can see that window there. It's probably the worst one in the house, but how it all sags. This one here. Yeah. Yeah, it goes because you've got three parts. You've got this, yeah. that edge part. That one on the inside is almost falling off. What is spray. that? So they've used a zinc loom capping underneath that is silicon to the wall, and then that's their waterproofing method from the top up there down. Effective, but not aesthetically pleasing. And you get the same issue like with the flashings. I mean, that's ugly, isn't it? I mean, nothing else to say it's ugly. And it just doesn't look... It looks like a, um, a shed. Yeah, a, a, it, it looks like... The gap here is just, just ridiculous. It does not look professional. It looks like someone's done it on their own, like just a home handyman sort of work. I mean, that hand completely out. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's a mouse so you couldn't there. you couldn't have children running around out here. No. Because they put their finger in there, they slice their finger open and So that all angles back and runs down inside there, like there's no way for that water to get away. That's all falling backwards. Yeah. Like on that angle. That's yeah. again. Yeah, so water will just run down oh, this, back into there and inside the window. This it all falls water all this water like my, I have to wash that window because water falls down into the window. On the inside? On the inside of the window. I have to wash that window quite regularly if I get rain. Alright, so that's falling back 3.6 degrees. Yes, it's an iPhone. That's 3.6 degrees. <laughs> I think it's actually more because that's picking up the little lip on the phone. Yeah. You were saying that they were about, they said it was finished and... Yeah, it was finished, but um, I got them to come around and all they did was like tack off these edges, but I said to them, I've got little kids, and like, I can't have that. I said, if my kids run past that, I said, they've got no skin left on them. Like, mm. the, the challenge with Colour Bond uh, and the install on the cladding is to, to have that, have a system that gives you the um, least amount of that. Like, you will get sharp points on corners. Yeah. Yes. That, that will be happen and sometimes they're hard to get away with. But in the process of installing it all, you kind of want to do it so it's minimising. Yeah. I mean, if it's way up in the air and no one, who cares? Yeah, it doesn't. No. no. Yeah. But I mean, the part of the whole thing is to minimise like, safety sides of things, scratches and things. 
Um, yeah, well, all of that has it's been cut pretty rough. Look, there's a factory edge sheet. If you can see the difference here, that there's a factory edge sheet. That there's been cut by hand. And it's it's not the end of the world to have a cut sheet there. Just it needs to be done neatly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and a lot. It's pretty unsightly. The and the consistency. It almost looks like they pre-drilled all of these sheets before putting the screws in or something. Because I mean, that's just way too. Look at this one here. Like water has to be coming in there. Yeah. There's there's not a the water's not going in there. It's How's the water not going in there? Yeah. Well, especially this side of the house, because it gets most of the weather. Mm -hmm. um, this side, it gets absolutely slammed when, it, when we're raining. Look at that! Look at the fallback on that! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Uh, what? Did you get that? I saved it. <laughs> Alright, so we've got a fallback there of... It's about somewhere between four and four, four just over four degree fallback. Like I said, we need to come through, like we normally come through with like a broom or something on the rain and we come and wash it all off so we tries to sort of try to get rid of it because yeah. it just sits there. Yeah, and it will be going in. Yeah. So knowing that, yeah, that's... The fact that you've got water coming in there, that's yeah. that, a lot of that would be potentially coming from here. Yeah, I'm not sure. We were trying to see where it came in from. All I know is it comes in and like the next morning I'll wake up and there'll be water on the inside. Right. So, like... Yeah. So, and then you've got the same issue again here. Yeah. Okay, then you've got these big giant gaps at the bottom yeah. again. Like that. Like that. Huge gaps. Like... Well, see, you'd, you'd expect to see that on a roof. I had a Q, uh, QBCC guy come out to our place once, and we put the roof on our own house, and he saw something out through a window on the roof. He goes, if you want me to be picky, I, I'll pick on your scribes there. Oh. Right? I said, that's fine. I'm happy to replace that if that's deemed to be not um, yeah. com conforming. And he, he didn't because it wasn't. It was... I don't even think they were starting from a good spot with the slab. Like, if you go through, there's the slab's quite poor. Like, ears are right, but you can see how that's all bent up. Like, yeah. there's parts of the slab that they just couldn't even get that yep. to sit on. I think the back of the house, Ooh. you can actually see <laughs> this. Yeah, the like that oh, look at this! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! But so they installed that. See, they had to install that before putting yeah. this wall cladding on. Yeah. So the installer knew that they were doing a terrible job before they even put the... And yeah, they just kept going the anyway. Thing they did, and they just kept going. Right. Yeah, because that's falling backwards pretty substantially right there. Yeah, yeah, water sits there everywhere. Like, you don't really get... There's not really much of the cladding where, like, especially lips where the water does not sit. Right. So it's like a tedious job when it's pouring down with rain. You've got to, you know, come it out and you're trying to... And you can't just clean it off with hosing it. No. <laughs> no. Oh. And this is... Yeah. yeah. So that's the edge of the... Roof. That's their finishing job and that's their... We, we pulled them up on the, being no drip edge. Yeah. Um, so there, this is meant to have, I think it's... Uh, it's, it's at least 10 or maybe 20 millimetres where that sits down over this timber. So, okay, so say that timber's fallen a tad, but being that that's flush on there... Or fallen because it's fallen. Fallen because water. it's swollen because of the water. Yeah. yeah, when they first installed it, it was flush. But they pulled up and he was like, oh, do we, is there supposed to be a drip edge there? No, nah, that's the way it's finished. We were like, oh. And the green is you've got your termite barrier. How come that's sitting up? Is there a plan for a deck to go out on the concrete? No. Or? We just got told, oh, you'll be able to do something with that later. That, the builder wasn't going to finish that. That was our finished. That was the handover was going to be with the yeah. termite barrier exposed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. well, Queensland builders. Yeah. At the finest. Excuse my mess. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. 
Well, you're living and renovating and finishing and not renovating, but fit building and rectifying. Uh, I think you've got every right to have some mess. Um, okay. So, the, yeah. <laughs> at the point where up there at that window where it's not all finished off, that was kind of at the point where the contract was now. Yeah. 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 We, we've so the, the last straw was that this window, this was the last window to come in, this stuck a door. And I came in and the installers were going to install it about 80 to 100 mil out here mm -hmm. um, because he hadn't recessed the concrete. So that was the last straw. I pulled those tradesmen up and said, no, no more. We'll contact the, the builder. And that's sort of where everything went. Fall down. Fall right. down. He came and got this fitted and then we got that. Invoice and then it all he ran away with the money. So he cut the concrete out and recessed it so the window could sit. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it looks like it's been cut out. So something yeah. that's yeah. now okay. Yeah. But apart from this side, like that's all overhanging. So that, it was more on that side. Right. That's sitting. Yeah. Wow. So then you've got. A nice big drop off there. Yeah, yeah, be careful. I will, I will. <laughs> he would have at least had fencing here to protect people from falling off there. Oh. This is, this is, we put this up, this is more than he had. Oh, right. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, but the, but the builder abides by WHS, evidently. <laughs> That's what the court said. Not getting caught by them. So yeah, so that bit there, that's where like you can just see daylight up into the roof from that flashing bit there. Right up there. Yeah. I think I don't know if you can see it actually from now, but you could actually see into our roof cavity. I can see straight can up see. into something. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling you're not meant to see sucking up there though. I think it mainly it's meant to be a nice closed off finished. Well, yeah, um, and the, the whole point of is uh, vermin proof and fire, uh, the it's, vapor, vapor proof. Well, it's still got to conform to a habitable structure. Yeah. So when you put other cladding on, fibre cement cladding, timber cladding, you have to still seal the whole lot, so. That looks good. Ooh, is that. Are we looking at electricians are us? Or? Uh, well, no, that was the concreters. So this is all the, you can see the cold pour. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, where they poured it. And he's poured this on after because he didn't do it correctly. And But if you have a look. Right. Oh, okay. Well, that's supposed to be our vermin barrier. Oh, I can see orange um, tape of some sort. Oh, no, there's no, oh, there's a baton. So there's your batten underneath there, and then you've got your termite barrier, which is right. And you've got what is that? That's termite barrier that comes up to the underside of the timber frame, which is completely exposed. So your ter the termite system, which is meant to hide your your frame from termites, yeah. is completely exposed. hasn't no. hidden the frame from termites. Like I was already said it, the builder has completely trashed it; it needs to be redone. Right. Right. Yeah, the builder actually came and as you can see here, he's just the where the termite barrier used reason. to be. He's just poured concrete over it, and then gone and bought his own from Bunnings and redone it. Oh. And that's what that green stuff is there. Oh. Sorry. Back. To, no, that's okay. So what's this? This is leftovers that they left here yeah. after yeah. attempts, two attempts. Yeah. This was it, this was spread all over the yard. They okay. just left it there. So like this one here, that's I don't even know what you'd use that for. This is your uh, no, I don't know what that's for either. That that there looks to me like that's what they put on the wall at the top of like the wall up up there. Um, and so that may have. That, that like yeah, it's been up there. So if water was to go up, it's going to come down there, and then that sits on top of the sarking, which comes down over the top of all the battens, which comes down at the bottom. Which it's it, it kind of I'm thinking it's not the end of the world. It's not the best solution, though. It's a lot better than uh, a lot of the time we'll see where they just put that straight over the top, and that's all they'll do. But the fact if that's what they've been using for a, a 
Safit flashing, then it's better than a lot that I've seen. Right, look at all that. It's just that's a lot to have to pay that's for. Probably half of it. All the all the other stuff, the, the really bad stuff's already been taken away. Yeah. Right. So you'll keep this on the basis as hopefully you might be able to use some of it? Um, in all honesty, we just haven't done dump runs. But, um... <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess you've only just come to the end of the QBCC thing. Yeah. And so... So we just left, we sort of didn't touch anything. We didn't want to get in trouble for just... We spent probably, what, a year and a half not even coming here. Right. So paying mortgage, I assume, on mortgage this and rent. Out at Yarrabilga and... That was going through the roof every quarter. Yeah, crazy. I can't believe. Yeah, family. So you guys have actually got the double, the double edge sword. You've got the um, victims of the, to call the housing crisis, and the bankrupt builder. Or oh, it's not a bankrupt builder. It's someone who should be. If I did the roofing and cladding on this, I'd sign a Form 12 saying that I've done it to code, yeah. and I'd hand that over to the builder, yeah. and the builder at certification would hand it all in. He's, and if it's not a good builder. The builder's not going to go around looking at the place no. and checking, oh, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, because they don't actually know. Yeah. So, and this is what Zahir's finding with um, the installation, like the way, the whole process, when, it, when we talk about roofing, and that's what I'm really qualified to talk about, is the architects design a house, mm -hmm. yeah. or, or the designers design a house, and they design the water system. Like how do you get the water from the top to the ground into the stormwater without it leaking? They design that yep. and then that gets, that gets quoted by the builder. The builder gets the roofing company to quote that. Mm -hmm. The roofing company comes along, installs as per the original design by the architect or the designer mm -hmm. and then the designer has no, they've got no liability at that stage. As soon as the roofer installs it, yeah. the roof is now responsible for it more than the builder. Yeah. yeah okay. So it's continued to go down that path, and the roofer just does what they told they do, they do. Even if it doesn't meet code, they'll still do it. And there's this whole thing of now going well. Every every build should have a hydraulic engineer's design yeah. to say this is how it needs to be to make it work. And that's something that he is actually pushing yeah, okay. to change things so that it, that so the onus isn't on us, the roofer, yeah. to make sure that we're doing it properly. Yeah. And that's kind of where it's gone to because it, and in Victoria you have a Inspect, yeah, inspectors come out and look at things. So the VBA is going and seeing all those ones that he's looking at mm -hmm. and not doing anything about them. Yeah, it's crazy. Where up here, no one looks at it. No. Like, no, there's no actual well, inspection of the roof plumbing. Well, no, because, well, the QBCC came here and their exact words to us, if we can't see it, we don't want to know about it. We were like, what? We're telling you that the sarking isn't installed correctly well, we can't see it. I'm like, here, let me take off a piece of sheeting. And he's like, oh, you know, we're not here to do all that. And I'm like, you're really turning a blind eye. Like, we had photos. This is this is the QBCC's QBCC inspector. 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 We had two so inspectors. We're um, the corner over in the back corner, right? We've got a photo. So when they've pulled the sarking around, they have scrunched it. That is how our sarking goes around the corner. So it meets two pieces and they have scrunched it what? together. Rather than overlapping at the minimum 150 and millimetres. And on top of that. Yet ah. the QBCC couldn't care. Right. We were like, we've, there's a photo, it's black and white, that they haven't done it correctly. Oh, we can't see it now. I'm like... Was it really that, like, arrogant? Oh, it just... Is it, I mean, it, it dumbfounds me. At the same time, I understand, because it's not the first... I just, Tom, I've heard it. Well, see, we haven't been through any of this. Like, we've never, yeah. and I will never ever, never ever build in my life again. I tell you now, we're kind of to the point, we, we're worried about the longevity of the house. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, how structurally watertight is it? Mm -hmm. um, but not only that, like, I mean, this was supposed to be our house for the rest of our life. We weren't planning on leaving until the kids leave home, and that's when we look at downsizing. And But, you know, like... How so, much work is going to need to be on the place to maintain it now? The way that it is, it, it needs something done. And there's a few things, I think, because I get your whole... Your, the whole issue is, is you wanted to be able to have this and then not worry about it and go, your normal maintenance that you do on a house, yeah. that's fine. It's fine. I sell it. I can't sell it knowing that I've got we're, we're windows with a, hanging off. And yeah, then we're I've dealing got... with a broken car that we just keep fixing because we can't bring ourselves just to 
move on from it and make it someone else's problem. Like, yeah. not those type of people. <laughs> you know. Here's, um, so that's the doors. So there's the block of wood that, that's all the overhang of the door. And then they've just got flashing up under it. So, yeah, not quite even sure. I can't see how that is even... Allowed. But because it was flashed, the QBCC didn't want to know about it. Yeah, because they can't see it. But sure, do you have the flat, do you have the sarking? So that's essentially the door manufacturer would have a um, installation we guide. We did that. We yeah. even went, we went to, to that and... It's everything though. So we even went to the sarking, the people who, so we saw... We rang the sarking. We saw... Yeah, okay, that stuff's really good. Yeah. yeah. That stuff's good cool. stuff. But I mean, that's not how it should be. So that's but the finished. That's a, a, a quite a heavy duty. Yep. That, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, okay. That's... Um, it was so, very thick. Yes, it, it was thick. Yeah, it was about one point. One there's, there's things about pliable and non-pliable. We're in um, temperature zone th two, yeah. weather zone two, whatever it's well, called. So more had to rip, had to meet bow. Yeah, everything was bow, 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 bow. Yeah. Um, so that would that that's a very good sucking. Like yeah. that's that we put that on schools that need to meet bow ratings. If it was installed correctly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was the original flashing under the doors until we kicked up a stink. Yeah. Yeah, that that's. Yeah, look left. at how look at the ribs. Yeah. Like it's just. So you can see that was how it was originally installed. So the flashing under there, and you can see all the screws up the side of the door. Yeah. Now, if that was all done and it was all proper, like after, it can look. Like, so I have this thing was called. Um, you don't. You can't see what the artist is doing while the. Yeah, that's you've probably heard that statement yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that you just judge it at the end. So if you were to not look at anything and then judge it at the end, well, the end result is still rubbish. Yeah. So, so the corner. original. That's how that originally was yeah. installed. That was the big gap that was under it that I, we kicked up a stink over that. So that's a gap. Sorry. That <laughs> what? Yeah. Can you send me these? And this is the, like we came quite regularly on the weekends, and that's when we started to pick up on this is not right. Mm -hmm. Like. So I've got like thousands of photos of just of things that are done. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I'm looking up here and seeing that you've they've got that barge butted in with a bunch of silicon that's just been rubbed down that front yeah. side and and yeah. things and looking okay. I I think that there's if you look at it from a monetary side of things yeah. on what can be done to um how would I put it to get it watertight so that you can stop worrying. There's non-aesthetically pleasing ways of doing it that aren't going to cost you the earth. Yeah. And then there's the aesthetically pleasing things, which to me is rip that whole wall off, rip that whole wall off, rip all of this off. It just needs to be ripped off. Um, and a lot of it, I think there is a lot of rip it off. So you could go and re could reuse a lot of the material rectify the material like taking that toe mold out trimming the bottom making it sit proper yeah um the problem with that is you spend a lot of money on labor to get it to a point yes opposed to we look at each individual section and say that section there we this needs to happen this needs to happen this needs to happen read and what can we do yeah um, and that's what i think we should do right now and i'll go and document each individual section and kaylee and i will just walk around ourselves and mm -hmm. look at each part yeah. And then I, we can, so what can be done? How can, can something be fixed? Yeah. And then what it is, because essentially you don't want to keep water to keep coming in. We, we well, that's our main. to a stage where we can get it signed off and we can live in it. Yeah. That's, yeah. So the goal, goal is, okay. even if something's going to be ugly for a bit, you just need to get it signed off and get your occupancy certificate. Yeah, pretty much at the moment, you know. I mean, it's not where we want it. To be well, if we could reflat, like the windows are my are my biggest issue. They're holding water, and I know there's water coming through the windows because I haven't painted any of the window trims on the inside, and you can see mold coming. Like yeah. oh, they were supposed to be, um, he he was supposed to get them hygienically treated, professionally hygienically treated. I don't know what that means. Um, when I asked him, steam clean. He was like, I sprayed them with bleach. I was like, what? Okay. Like, it's hydrantly cleaned. Well, okay. Right. Okay. But then now. I've but it's continuing to come back and back and back. Right. So because he hasn't, it's it's like it's not watertight. <laughs> a wheel alignment on a car, the ball getting a ball spot on one side. You don't just replace the tire. You've got to fix the wheel alignment. Yeah.